We're going to compare wives to exotic pole dancers, and I'm going to blend that with the reason why Jessica Wong's mindset is dangerous for women, for, for her and women like her. Let's start with the wife. You see, the wife gets the best return on investment so long as she marries young. Okay? She's traded her most valuable assets early, her youth and beauty, while her value is at its peak in exchange for long-term security and a great lifestyle for both herself and her children. The wife doesn't suffer mentally, physically, or psychologically because her lifestyle is sustainable long-term, which means she doesn't suffer the mental, physical, or psychological drawbacks that women in the sex industry are subject to. The wife's ROI isn't the quickest because it's spread out over time, kind of like an annuity. The wife also happens to work the hardest for her ROI because being a good wife and mother are not easy, but her return on investment is the best because she gets security, commitment, gifts, trips, resources, and her children are taken care of. She gets all of these things because being married to a man of value and raising his children yields this kind of return. The wife cashes in early and realizes an ROI that lasts a lifetime and sometimes even longer. Let's move to exotic pole dancers. Now, relative to the wife, the exotic pole dancer's ROI is front-loaded. In other words, she gets all of her ROI up front. And depending upon her habits, her return could last a little bit longer and be a little bit higher provided she's smart with her money and takes care of herself to extend the life of her career. Now, unlike the wife, the exotic pole dancer doesn't trade her assets. Oh no, she leases them out. Remember, the wife traded her youth and beauty to one man for a lifetime of access to his resources. The stripper leases her youth and beauty out to multiple men for access to whatever they have in their wallet at a time. Plus, the mental, the physical, and psychological cost of being a stripper is substantially higher than a wife. Think about it, she is taking her clothes off for men she does not know for cash. After a while, guys, that fucks with a woman's mind even if she's not turning tricks in the champagne room for extra money, which a lot of them do. The ROI of a stripper is a lot faster than a wife's return on investment, and the reason for this is, well, because being a stripper is much easier than being a good wife and mother. Being a good wife and mother requires a lifetime commitment. Being a stripper requires a lot less. All she's gotta do is take off her clothes, Shake her ass, show her boobs, maybe a little cooch, she gets an instant return. Rinse and repeat. Now, having dated a few of them myself, I can tell you that these girls bring in anywhere between fifteen, fifteen hundred, and three thousand dollars a night. So while the stripper gets her return on investment quickly, it doesn't really last that long because, as we all know, a woman's beauty fades very quickly. And when that happens, the party is over. No, strippers don't have to put in the years that the wife does, but as soon as the pole dancing career ends, so does the money. And if she saved some of the money she's made, there's no lifetime ROI for a stripper, guys. She cashed out early, remember? She got all hers up front, remember? She can't go back and ask for more. And if she has a kid, which most of them do, her dating prospects as a single mother will be abysmal. Is he unlike the young woman who got married while the Oda meter was in the single digits? The former stripper won't command the same kind of clientele because she was leased out to many different people. The men simply will not pay more for something used than something that is new. Men factor in a woman's usage rate for the same reason Kelly Blue Book and Carfax exists, because it matters. A man is not going to wife up a single mother in her mid-30s for the same reason a customer won't pay sticker price for a car with 100,000 miles on it. Now, a few levels down, <laughs> way down, we have escorts, and porn stars. Now, their return is similar to the strippers, but the cost for getting paid to have sex is that it eliminates any possibility of being chosen by any man of value in any capacity. And I would also include sex in that. Listen, Mia Khalifa is very attractive. I would never have sex with her, ever. Lana Rhodes, also very attractive. I wouldn't fuck her with somebody else's dick. And if guys like me thinks this way, think this way, these girls can kiss anything resembling a healthy relationship of any kind goodbye. So in layman's terms, as far as the math goes, the more upfront money and resources an attractive woman gets, the higher the price she pays up front. Okay? The wife's payment is spread out over a long period of time because her return is paid back over a long period of time in the form of a marriage. 
a stripper a stripper's payment is a little steeper because she realizes a quicker return up front in the form of cash payment escorts working working girls and adult film actresses pay a very steep price but again they get a very high return but that doesn't last very well at all so again i reiterate there is absolutely nothing wrong with working in the sex industry if you're a woman i don't pass judgment on these women i don't point the finger at them okay I don't categorize them as morally bankrupt. They're simply doing what they're doing to make a living either because they want to or because they have to. Sex workers get no shade for me. That said, I have positively zero tolerance for sex workers who cash out early, who then turn around and complain that they can't find a relationship or a job because of their career choice. These women like to talk about how there's nothing wrong with what they're doing and that they're simply fulfilling a market need and all the rest of that. And they're right. But then they turn right around and complain about how terrible their lives are because of their time as a sex worker. Mia Khalifa, who I mentioned before, she can't stop complaining about how being a porn star has ruined her life. Then there's also Brie Olson a few years back. I think she actually used to date Charlie Sheen. But a few years back, she was complaining that men don't want her and that companies won't hire her because she did porn. Ladies, you cannot have it both ways. You cannot enjoy the benefits of having bedroom fun with the most well-endowed men in the world, but then expect men who are aware of your career to want to wife you up. Now, there are many obvious reasons men of value don't commit to former sex workers, but one reason that doesn't really get as much attention are the economical reasons as it pertains to fooling around. And stay with me here, guys. I will explain. A man who is aware that a woman has done adult films or worked as an escort or a call girl doesn't want to commit resources to her okay he may sleep with her but outside of that he's not committing anything else and the economic reason is that she's already been used up there's no tread left on her tires she's already gotten the maximum amount of money and research resources from maximum usage she got maximum she got the maximum usage that her prime youth and beauty could get her according to her market value in other words he's not going to give money or resources to a woman who's already cashed out just doesn't make fiscal sense and men don't think of this consciously this is all calculated in our firmware biology simply will not allow us to invest in a woman who is not investable this is why high value men rarely commit to women who act like hoes the more men she's been with the less she's worth and women know this they act like they're surprised that nobody wants to buy the lamborghini with 400,000 miles on it oh they'll rent it for a day or two drive around Miami or Vegas to try to score some easy box with the fake flex, but they're not buying that vehicle. They're not investing in something that's already been driven that much. They want the car with a, they want the car with little to zero mileage, regardless of the model. A lot of men would be very surprised if they knew just how many attractive women have done adult films, amateur or otherwise. I knew so many guys in Vegas who found out four or five months four or five months in that their girlfriend or a woman that they're seeing used to be a call girl an escort or a stripper or did two or three amateur adult films it didn't used to be this way okay women who worked in the sex industry were few and far between but in this day and age you would be hard pressed to find an eight a nine or a ten who does not monetize her sexuality in some way shape or form and that includes jessica wong Jessica not only not only believes that her value will never decline, as she will tell Kevin exactly that, she's the kind of woman who expects to cash out on both ends of her sexual prime.